I just remember the strategy the last time I played this game for uh, for these things was spam those summoned wasps with wasps with guns things, and it seems to still work okay now. <laughs> More wasps with guns. It's time to oil up. Talismans. Talisman League. Okay, it's been over a year. Wasn't there some recipe like where you would combine talismans to do something or another? Is that still anything? You can also focus the Atlas with Blight stuff, can make good currency. Mm. I did see a thing at one point that mentioned favorite, like, your, it's like, blah, 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 your favorite maps. And I was like, how do I do favorite maps? So that's something else I have to learn at some point, unless that's really easy to be explained to me, in which case I'd appreciate it. Press G. Okay, hang on. Let me finish this fight. Oh, so many level ups. Hold on, are we safe? Shine boldly so that all Oh, I didn't get two offerings this time. Oh, I did last time. Press G and it's on the left side. Okay, G. Left side. Complete a tier 16. What? Favored maps. Favored map slots are unlocked by completing specific objectives or defeating specific encounters. Okay. Favored maps will have a higher chance of dropping. Oh, just th those maps have a higher chance of dropping, period. Can you favorite, like, unique maps? Uh, complete a tier 16, Elder Guardian, Shaper Guardian, Conqueror, The Atlas, Sirius, Venarius, Shaper, Elder, Maven, Eater, Searing Exarch. Beard. All right, so a bunch of big freaking bosses in tier 16. No uniques. Oh, Fine. Well, thank you. I appreciate that explanation. I saw something related to favorites on this monster, and I did not know what it was talking about. You can favor the same map multiple times. I guess that could be useful for, like... Let's say I was trying to farm the Primordial card. There's, like, one map where the Primordial card drops. I could just, like, favorite that a bunch, in theory. I don't know that I'm going to do that. I'm just spitballing here. Scarab. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unrelated question. I've been enjoying your Rogue Trader streams and want to do a different Alcat game. Should I start with Kingmaker or do Wrath of the Righteous? Gorniar, hello, nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you, you're nine months up. What am I saying? <laughs> nice question is what I should have said. Um, they are both excellent games. They are both excellent games. Wrath of the Righteous goes to higher levels though. English is hard. Yeah, I'm sorry. English is my first language, uh, and I have no respect for it at all. Uh, King... Okay, to really oversimplify this, if you're talking like Dungeons & Dragons, Kingmaker is a game that's like, you know, you go from like level 1 to 15. Wrath of the Righteous, you go from like level 1 to 30 or something insane. Like, by the end of Wrath of the Righteous, you're punching God in the sh in the shin, okay? Like, at the beginning, you're saving a cat from a tree. At the end, you're, you're fighting God. Uh, so, uh, Kingmaker is much more mortal, you know? And it's a great story. It is awesome. It is good. It's a, lo a lower level campaign. Wrath of the Righteous does have, so you know, it's higher level, which means there's more abilities. By the end, you're drowning in skills. Uh, but they are not introduced to you all at once. It's not that bad. Uh, whereas, like, Warhammer 40k, it's like you level up, but it's like, here's 102 talents, choose one. You're like, well, oh my god, I have to read all this. Uh, 
So, either one you could start with. Although they do occur in the same universe, there's very little interaction between the two. Like, Kingmaker happens, and then, like, a hundred years later in a different part of the world, Wrath of the Righteous happens. You do not have to play Kingmaker before Wrath. There's just a few references to Kingmaker in Wrath, but it's it's not a big, like, tie-in. Um, so, in, in Wrath, there's, some, there's this one awesome system where you get to kind of, like, be imbued by a greater power. I became a Lich and became a Lord of Undead. And I started with a druid, and it had some cool effects, too, because my uh, my animal companion, which was a giant saber-toothed tiger named Chip, became an undead animal companion. So I had a giant skeletal saber-toothed tiger named Chip, which was awesome that they made that interaction. Um, so I was, a, I was a lich druid, but you could have been, like, angelic or, like, demonic or, like, uh, the embodiment of order or... Uh, uh, you could have been literally a swarm of walking insects in a human coat. Like, there was all kinds of crazy... Fey, yeah. There, there was all kinds of crazy things that you could get empowered by by the end of the story. Kingmaker, you're a hero, but you are a mortal hero. Like, your, your life is on the line. And, you know, that has its own charm to it as well. So, I mean, my, my short answer is definitely play both, but whichever one you start with does not matter. You do not have to play them, like, first one, then second one. Those sound awesome. Crap, maybe I'll start small to move to Punching God of the Angel Bear later. You can do that. You can do that. Also, um, if you become interested in it, uh, let, you know, down the line, Kingmaker and Wrath both had little DLCs. And the ones I've played were quite good. Um, I, I will be vague because I don't want to spoil you, but like Kingmaker, it had a deal. It, you know, there's this one point in the story where you get to a city and it's, we'll just say it's already fallen. Kingmaker DLC, you play as the unknown hero of that city and experience what happened before it fell. And in the main game, you and the DLC was called Barnhold's Lot because the city was Barnhold. So in the DLC, you find out what happened in Barnhold, and someone did stand up to it, and what happened to it. And it was a really cool story. And Wrath of the Righteous had a DLC called Inevitable Excess. Um, and it was, dude, the, it had bad reviews from people that played, like, less than an hour of it on Steam. But, like, one hour into it, they dropped the biggest curveball. Like, it was like a Doctor Who season finale. I was like, what? That's so cool. <laughs> like, I remember being mind blown when they dropped the, uh, the twist, you know, the M. Night Shyamalama Ding Dong twist on you right at the end of that and you know it was like a five or ten dollar dlc it had just like some of the some very amazing writing uh that tie, that did tie into the main story of rap in that one so those are definitely a recommend for me as well as i'm just uh gasming out here over uh these old games i've played are those playthroughs on youtube yeah yeah um I think it's called here. One second. Let's see. Uh, playlist inevitable. Yep, there's inevitable excess right there. Yep, that one's on there. That was the Wrath of the Righteous one. Uh, Varnhold. How do they? How do they spell Varnhold? I might the Varnhold slot. Oh, you know what? I think my entire Kingmaker playthrough might have been before the birth of Mucklock plays. So Kingmaker one is actually on the main channel, but they're like, each video is like five hours long because I was bad at YouTube at the time. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I have said before that, okay, I played Kingmaker the day it came out. Guys, it was a buggy mess. Like, 
three or four days in, like real life days, I had to restart the whole game because I was it was like at a point where it was like bugged, and I had saved uh, like my oldest save file was after the bug, and I could not go back, and I needed to restart the whole game. And like there was some really bad problems with it, like crashing constantly, and uh, I still finish it, and it was still a lot of fun, but that was like it had a really bad launch. Uh, however, like when I play Wrath of the Righteous, I constantly get people that pop into the channel and they're like, hey, uh, how is the game? Is it as bad as some of the other Alcat ones at launch or is it okay? And I'm like, actually, it's it's fine. It's very stable. Uh, but yeah, I would love to play Kingmaker again because I've heard they've done a ton of quality of life stuff since I played it. And I, I would love to do a new playthrough of Kingmaker at some point when we're like caught up on new games that I'm interested in. Like tomorrow, for example, the Dyson Sphere program uh, combat update comes out, and I would like to try that. Queen's Decree. Um, pretty cool, but my defense would go way down with the loss of shields. So I'm not going to use that. Um, ever played Disco Elysium? I own a copy of D-Doc. Do you remember Joe Neal's? Joe Neal's wanted me to play it and i bought a copy of it on sale and i never got around to playing it so i own it but i've not played it uh let's see which game would you recommend for someone totally new to classic rpgs i've thought i've been asked this before and i had a lot of time to think about it last time i w i think my answer would be divinity original sin 2. it was amazing game both in gameplay and in storytelling and it was not hard to get into. Whereas, for example, if you start off with Pathfinder uh, Kingmaker or Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, you have to learn the D20 system, which if you know it, that's fine. If you don't, that takes time. Um, even in Baldur's Gate 3, you've got to learn the D20 system plus the camping system. Uh, and I'll be honest, I loved Baldur's Gate 3, I did not like having to camp to re re charge my spells constantly. That was annoying. Like, you know, use up spells, go to camp, rest, redo my buffs, leave town, use my spells, camp, re you know, rest, recharge my spells, redo buffs, leave town. It, it was annoying, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad I'm done with it. Um, but it, with Divinity, Divinity, um, okay, let me, let me explain this in a way, a, a simple way. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to need paint for this. Ah, I'm sorry, that was very bright. Um, but the, the, we'll just do this. Okay, so let's say you've got uh, on your action bar down at the bottom in Divinity, you'll have a bunch of these like little circles, okay? And they're all the exact same size and I will not hear any different, okay? Um, then at the beginning of the fight, you'll get like three of them will be green, okay? And then you you do an action. You, you run 10 feet toward the enemy. One gets used up. You hit them in the face. One gets used up. You hit him again. One gets used up. That's the end of your turn. Or you could like boop, boop, boop. You can like run behind cover and then you could just wait. Next turn, you get three more. So now this turn, you could do five actions. You could run up to the enemy, hit him in the face, hit him in the face, hit him in the face, hit him in the face. You follow? It's, it's very easy to understand this system. Like you get this many actions per turn and if you want, you can save them up and use them on a future turn. That's Divinity Original Sin 2. Very easy to jump into, even if you have never played a game like it, which is why it's my first recommendation. Also, I should also add Divinity Original Sin 2 and Divinity Original Sin 1. Both occur in the same world, very long period of time apart. You do not have to play one first before two. Um, let's get rid of this stuff. Oh, I asked earlier and I didn't see an answer. Is there any reason I should keep old talismans, chat? Is there anything during current Path of Exile, any reason to save old talismans that I don't need, like for a recipe or something? Uh, they only look like different sizes because they're moving. Yep. Are you working on a 2023 recap video? Uh, at the end of the year, I'll do one of those videos where I like, do, do, you know, tier list all the games I played. I did one for 2022 and it was actually went really well. Um... Mm -mm -mm -mm. BG3 is a lot more accessible as a D&D &D 5e uh, game than King Mirror of the Righteous has a Pathfinder 1e system. 
Um, yeah, but I, I would say that not making someone learn either D20 rule set is good for their first CRPG. Just my opinion. Uh, I'm here learning about the game. You ask me questions. Lol. Talismans are 999 times out of a thousand useless. Okay. Um, I remember there was a, a talisman back in the day that increased how many zombies you could have. I don't see that, though. Alright, so, uh, nope, offering to the goddess. No, I go to the other thing. Let's do the the big bad labyrinth again. So, big, the big labyrinth will, will be uh, plenty of XP, and then if we can clear the thing at the end, we will get to uh, two attempts at the uh, the thing we want. And if we happen to get the thing we want on the first attempt... I The thing is, I don't even know for sure. Ooh. Car... I had almost forgotten I got a root canal yesterday, and then I chomped right on it. Oh my god, I'm tearing up. <laughs> that really hurt. <laughs> oh god, what was I saying? Yo, that just gave me a hard reboot. Ah, I remember. Uh, I'm not even positive that the Horde of Stone Golems is going to be good for me or not. I just, I want to try it. Um, right, you know, it might be the same as the Carrion Golem Horde, or it might be worse. I don't know. But it'll be a Fizz Golem either. I do know it has Taunt. Uh, car uh, what is it? Uh, stone Golems have Taunt built into them. Uh, kind of like a Meat Shield zombie does. So it would be more Taunters. Don't get slammed? Yeah. Is this endgame? What you see me doing right now, D-Doc? Um, if you're comparing... I mean, I'm level 86, but there, I would say there's many levels to endgame. You could say this is a part of endgame. You know, it, the, the, just doing the Labyrinth at all could be considered sort of endgame. Um, but there's four tiers to the Labyrinth. This is the top tier. And... Uh, sometimes endgame is doing Labyrinth. You could do high-level maps. You could try to hunt down those crazy big bosses, which I've never killed before. Maybe this will be my first season doing that. Like uh, The Elder, the Shaper, the Maven. Um, there are others that I don't know the name of. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of end game activities. Thanks for the recommendations. I'm not really excited for some good storytelling games. You got me pumped up to go play Kingmaker again, but definitely need to finish what we're doing now. Um, I've also found that, <laughs> like, when I play CRPGs, you, when you play CRPGs on your own time, you know, you just read it in your head. But when I when I do it uh, on stream, I usually read everything out loud. Oh my god! Oh man, <laughs> my voice is hoarse. By the time I finish, uh, like a session of Ra uh, Wrath of the Righteous or uh, Rogue Trader, I am really, really loving the Rogue Trader combat. But I will say, they could have definitely done a few things to make it more approachable for um, new players. Like when you hit level two and you level up for the first time, there is like oh, between fifty and one hundred options for you to pick for your level two talent. That's insane. That's like saying, here, you get one point, put it wherever you want, anywhere on the street. And you're like, well, I want to pick the best one. So you spend an hour reading all this. It's like that. The game's awesome. I love the depth of it, but oh my god. They could have made it a little friendlier for uh, people ju jumping in for the first time. Danganronpa win. Okay, Danganronpa, I know only that it's a like a visual novel thing with anime people. And in the past, when I've played games with uh, anime people, I usually get a lot less viewership. That's not, I mean, I mean, like, Shugo shows up five times. He's all for it. But there's definitely less of an interest for my general audience in those. No matter how good 2B's legs are, you know? It would be so awesome, honestly, to get what uh, I'm trying to get, the Stone Golem of Hordes, on the first thing. And then on the second one, I could uh, pick one of the other options that I've not gotten to pick yet, which is like, you know, a bunch of gym quality or a bunch of gym XP. Uh, nope. 
That's not what I'm looking for. Tell you what, though, I really love the classes. I'm having a lot of fun with the classes in uh, Rogue Trader. Um, for, for those who haven't seen me play it, you know, it's a turn-based classic RPG, lots of storytelling, quite a bit of reading. But one of my main class is a guy called an officer. He literally excels at telling other people what to do. And so it's like, you know, during his turn, he can turn to someone else and say, bring them down. And it's one of his skills is scream, bring them down. And he gives someone else his turn. Now my party of six people has one person. It's a lady with a laser sniper rifle. And two people in the party are officers. So when the six of them all take a turn, I can have any one of them take three turns. So if I'm in a situation where the enemy's far away, both officers just start yelling orders at the sniper lady and she just starts popping off. If they get really close, both officers start like uh, yelling at my melee powerhouses and then they start going nuts. And they have, like, literally the given uh, give someone else your turn is just, like, low-level officer. There's, like, a bunch of other stuff, too. Um, but, yeah, it's, they've got some really creative classes in there I really like. By the goddess, what ambition. Sweep the trappings of past Gotta love the android aside. legs. Mm -hmm. Make your empire anew. Do you see, uh, I think it was Street Fighter added, um, was it Yor? The mom from Spy Kids? Or not Spy, Spy Kids. <laughs> Spy Family, the anime. Not Spy Kids, good God. The mom from uh, Spy Family and uh, Chun-Li were uh, fighting uh, in, a, in like a cinematic thing. And like the internet is going crazy over their thighs. Mike, I believe that running just the four stone goals should be better overall than current six goals. Set up at the very least to be comparable, so you should just obviously see how it feels. Uh, hang on. Hey! Is it your bedtime? Are you excited you're on vacation now? Oh shoot. I am getting hit with spikes from the floor. I'm gonna move over here. Alright, chat, I'm gonna tell the boy goodnight. I will be right back. Did I know that Rogue Trader was made by those who made Pathfinder games? Yes, uh, Owl Count Games made it. Oh, hold on. There we go. Uh, I believe that just running the four stone should be better than the six column setup. At the very least, to be comparable, you could solve the see how it feels. Uh, I'll wait. Because with all the impales, with all the impale chances, the more hits, the better, I think. Oh, there's a secret tunnel here. I was like, wait, I can see a path here. A potent little gift from our primitive past. I'm still waiting for Street Fighter of Arms. Oh, where was it? Hold on a second. Street Fighter, your and Chun Li. Uh, was this it? I think this is it. <coughs> Spy Family versus Street Fighter. I want to mute it because I like DMCA stuff. But yeah, her from the Spy Family anime, and then Chun Li, of course, from you know eighty years of Street Fighter, and then they showed them. Duking it out. So this this has been going nuts on Twitter for like for uh, let's see, was like eleven days ago. Like, oh my god, are they out of here to the game? Is this real? Is this fake? I don't know. And that's the scene. That is the scene. 
And people are like, the thighs! <laughs> They're like, oh my god. I feel like I should call the spike, uh, Master Seal Spikes just pop up out of nowhere. Mmm. I see what you did there, yes. Believers of the Holy Thibel. No, I didn't mean to click on that. Wait, don't I need the key on this one? Oh my god. Ah, uh, I forgot for this difficulty labyrinth, we actually need the key. Tell you what, hold on, just to try it. Recharge. When I'm ready, I'm All right. So I'm gonna have four Giga Stone Golems with uh, all of those stats on them. Okay, and then no, not that. Where's the armor? Skitterbot. Do I already have the armor active? It's right there. I already have it active. Okay. All right. <laughs> the rock smashing noises. <laughs> Smash, 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 smash. I feel like the game lags a bit when they all start attacking. Hopefully that was a fluke and it's not a permanent feature. They're very noisy. Where there's a golden key, there must be a golden door. Yeah, they've got a long animation time. I don't know. I don't know, because the carrion golems, I think, have faster animations. These, I feel like when they kill an enemy, they continue smashing that spot of ground for a while, like a, a little bit longer afterward. Uh, let's see. Holy frying pan, I just did the innocence fight with Max Resist and his tiny electric sparks he throws everywhere took 90% of my life. That's the, the stuff that bothers me about this game. Too many boss fights feel like they come out of Cuphead. <laughs> I think Path of Exile predated Cuphead. Maybe Cuphead feels like it came out of Path of Exile. Let the day dawn. Golden. Should have checked them out first. Okay, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> 